So, if you've been around the Dirt Gently fandom in the past few years, you might have heard about the mysterious animated series project. There's not a whole lot about the project available online, however, I've been following it since the idea was first floated, and have pieced together what's been happening based upon the piecemeal bits of information that have been shared and made public. The origins of the animated series started with the live-action BBC America Dirk Gently adaptation, and to really understand why it's taken so long, we first have to look at how that series came about, why it ended, and the subsequent timeline of events. One of the main producers behind both the BBC America show and the animated series is Arvind Ethan David. Together with James Goss, Arvin put on the Dirk Gently play at university in the mid-1990s, which led to him working for Douglas Adams. Douglas then sadly passed away in 2001. About a decade later, Arvin moved to Los Angeles, California, where he befriended screenwriter Max Landis, who like Arvin was a big fan of the Dirk Gently books since childhood. In 2012, Arvin was offered the rights to adapt the Dirt Gently novels for film and TV, and Landis was the first person he asked to be the show's lead writer and to help pitch it to TV networks. A co-production and distribution deal was made between BBC America and Netflix, with the first season airing in October 2016, and being renewed for a second season airing the following year. One of the big decisions made early on with the series was not to follow the plots of the books at all, with the show being set in the United States instead of the UK and Dirk being the sole returning character, albeit the version of Dirk played by Sam Barnett is markedly different in terms of personality to the versions we'd gotten up to that point. The rest of the cast played original characters created by Landis. On December 18th, 2017, a few days after the final Dirk Gently episode was broadcast, BBC America announced that they were cancelling the show due to poor ratings. To quote Stephen Mangan's version of Dirk, Yes, I understand that was the official explanation. I wouldn't choose to believe it myself. Less than a week later, Max Landis was accused by Anna Akana, who had worked with Landis on some of his short films, of sexual abuse and assault. Several other women in the industry also came forward with their own allegations, but they were deliberately careful not to accuse Landis of anything specific, citing fears that he would threaten lawsuits and ruin their careers. Landis responded by going into a social media blackout for several months. Now despite this controversy, attempts were made to revive the live action show for a third season. Arvind Ethan David was in discussions with Netflix to essentially fill the hole left by BBC America. By the 10th of March 2018, these talks had fallen through, with Arvind citing the fanbase simply not being big enough to convince Netflix to take on the huge costs of production. Inevitably, the fallout from the allegations against Landis would have made it an even riskier venture for Netflix. At around the same time, Landis announced that he had officially left the project. On the 9th of February 2019, Arvind revealed that he was working with an LA animation studio, Six Point Harness, to try and bring back Dirk Gently as an animated series, and on May 25th, revealed a partial script and concept art to that end. AMC, IDW, and Circle of Confusion who had all been key stakeholders in the BBC A show, were all still on board as partners. June 2019 brought some deeply disturbing news. Eight women came forward with detailed testimony against Max Landis, which revealed the scale of his abusive behaviour and the lengths he had gone to to cover it up. A lot of this testimony was backed up by the cast and crew of Dirk Gently, who revealed they'd endured similar experiences. Arvind Ethan David condemned Landis' actions and expressed regret at having hired him in the first place, but he also highlighted that the show as a whole didn't reflect the actions of its writer, and that fans could still take comfort from its themes and messages of inclusivity and tolerance. On October 23rd, further concept art for the animated series followed, but Arvind himself seemed a bit uncertain about the direction of the show. There was an internal debate going on about whether it should be a straightforward continuation, a reboot, or something completely tangential. Things were also not working out with Six Point Harness. By the end of 2019, Arvin had instead begun working with Stupid Buddy Studios, best known for creating Robot Chicken, on a brand new animated Dirt Gently concept. On the 21st of February 2020, Arvind announced that a lead writer and experienced animation showrunner had been hired, although he is yet to follow up on who either of those two people actually were or whether they or not they're still working on the project today. We also got a few photographs of the story bible from Arvind which revealed the official title for the show, Dirt Gently's Holistic Detective Agency The Animated Series, or DGHDATAS for short. On the 11th of March 2020, the day that the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak to officially be a pandemic, and also Douglas Adams' birthday, 
Arvin posted the Dropbox link to Twitter of a file named Dirk underscore zero four dot wav, along with a script. Anyway, as I was saying, for a few years back there, really a lot happened. Like a lot, lot, lot. Too much. Or was it just enough? You could almost say that everything that could happen did happen. As well as several things that almost definitely couldn't happen, but did anyway. So many happen things spread across two glorious cases in which I more or less saved the day, sort of, and the world, definitely, at least a world, part of a world, a world lit. After all that, for a moment, it looked like everything was going to be all right for once, that the forces of disorder were ordered and the menu they were ordered from was laminated and it seemed that I was going to get everything I had ever wanted. But sometimes, beginnings turn out to be those other things. <sighs> End things. We were sad. Sadness abounded. But then something else happened. You happened. You guys. You Dirk detectives. You, well, ugh, just you. <laughs> We knew then that we had to do something, because we owed it to ourselves, and because we owed it to you. This had been recorded a year before, presumably for the Six Point Harness version of the project, and was originally going to be the introduction to an animated Dirt Gently series that, as Sam Barnett's narration suggests, was planned to be a direct continuation to the live-action show. Arvind had essentially leaked this to try and show producers that there was still fan interest in Dirt Gently even several years after the cancellation. That was the start of the of what we were planning to do with the animated series but as i say things then got a little complicated with having to get you know just with the rights and getting you know there's, there's a lot of you know when you make a big tv show there's a lot of people involved there's a lot of money involved oh, yeah. there's a lot of studios and it took a while to get everyone on the same page that a we would do the animated series and b how we would do it and who we would do it with and where the money would come from and, and all those sorts of things and so you know, in, in hindsight, you know, I probably got a little bit ahead of my skis in actually getting as far as we did with, you know, recording some stuff. But it was useful because it was sort of a proof of concept and it, you know, it helped sort of focus people on this is worth doing, um, is what really happened, you know. So everybody was like, okay, we see, we see that there's the fan base, we see that the cast is, you know, is still interested, we see that the producers and the writers, are, you know, are still passionate. We're like, okay, let's all get behind it and do it. But that's what we were doing. We were, we were, we were basically, you know, doing a little proof of concept for the animated series. On May 25th, during a live stream for Stand Up for Towel Day, Arvind revealed some concept art which gave us our first real glimpse of this new iteration of the animated series, depicting Dirk looking very similar to the version played by Sam Barnett in the BBC America show, escaping an explosion. On the 24th of September, we received four more pieces of concept art from Stupid Buddy, courtesy of one of the artists there, named Mike, who was a big fan of the BBC A show. Mike, I don't know if you're still involved at this point, but thanks, you did a great job. You can tell at this point the designs were more polished, and we also got our first glimpse of Dirk's new assistant who goes by the name of Pearl, and a silhouetted, murderous looking girl who appears to be Bart Curlish from the BBC America series, who was of course a fan favourite character. In October, I interviewed Arvin for the Electric Monks podcast, and he revealed some interesting details about what he had planned. More on that later. On the 11th of March 2021, Save the Rhino, a rhino conservation charity whom Douglas Adams was a founding patron of, hosted an online version of the Douglas Adams Memorial Lecture, which Arvin was invited to speak at. To open the event, Arvin wrote and produced a short film titled Socially Distanced Dirk, which was recorded and set during lockdown, and features Sam Barnett and Hannah Marks revising their roles as Dirk and Amanda Brotsman, respectively. The short went down very well, even with the Adams fans who were not familiar with the show, and whilst there wasn't a whole lot of story there, there were a few hints of something interesting that might pay off down the line. Another thing Arvin mentioned during his interview with me, and he later confirmed this offhandedly during the Q&A near the end of the memorial lecture, was that he was also involved in two other Adamsverse projects which he was very excited about and expected to come to fruition before the animated series. Again. We've never had any follow-up on what these were, but it does seem, in typical Adamsverse fashion, that both of these projects remain trapped in development hell, if not in a state of being outright abandoned or cancelled. Unfortunately, it was then over a year before we heard anything at all, 
as the second half of 2021 and almost the entirety of 2022 passed with no news whatsoever. However, just over a week ago, at the very tail end of December, we did get this random comment from Arvind on a thread I had made speculating, entirely baselessly, that Arvind had hired Neil Gaiman to work on the animated series. So I found myself accidentally on here, so here's the scoop. It did indeed take a bunch of time to clarify rights on the Dirk Gently animated series, but that is now done. We also were spending some time attaching a phenomenal voice talent to the series as a new character, so that is done. The plan is to take the package out to buyers in the new year. Neil is not involved, he and I are cooking some other things together. Happy New Year! Is that basically what happened? How could you possibly know all that? I got it all right? How? That seemed obvious to me. Fans of Dirt Gently have waited since 2018 for the animated series to come to fruition, with Arvin hinting in his message after the talks with Netflix fell through that he intended to eventually come back to Dirk at some point in the future. So why then has it taken five whole years? Well first off, there was definitely a sense from Arvind and the team that had worked on the BBCA show they didn't want to rush into producing a continuation immediately, which is understandable given how hard they worked in vain to bring the show back and the difficult circumstances under which it ended. Arvind had also been writing the comics alongside his producing duties. By his own admission it had been an intense few years and he wanted to move on to focus on his other projects for a bit and come back to working on the Adamverse when he felt the time was right. Speaking of which, I personally believe that one of the Adamsverse projects Arvin was referring to being attached to was the live action Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy TV show that Hulu were supposedly making. Carlton Cuse and Jason Fuchs were both attached to the project as writers but both seem to have left to do other things and the show, which was announced in 2019 with such fanfare, seems to have been quietly shelved. I think Arvin has been very keen to avoid a similar disappointment with the Dirt Gently animated series by deliberately lowering expectations even if that means long chunks of time where we don't hear anything. And I can respect that. After all, we've never been owed more Dirt Gently or anything. And I'm glad it's Arvind, his co-producers from the BBC A-series and Stupid Buddy that are all working on it, instead of just some massive conglomerate like Disney who can just shelve something on a whim with no explanation. I always get the sense that Arvind cares about the fandom, even if I am an annoying and outspoken member of it. Arvin's February 2019 announcement that he was in talks with Six Point Harness was where the project really got going in earnest. From the outside it definitely seemed that the extensive allegations against Max Landis in June 2019 coincided with a loss of momentum for the project. Up to that point the plan seemed to be along the lines of the animated show simply picking up a couple of years after the events of the live action show as effectively a continuation. But after the extent of Landis' history of abuse was exposed this clearly changed. Landis did go public about some of his planned ideas for a third season and beyond, and I think the trouble for a continuation is that invites comparisons with those plans, which I believe the producers very much wanted to avoid. The decision to partner with Stupid Buddy, which was built on there being a pre-existing relationship between Arvin's company, Prodigal Entertainment, and one of the writers, instead signalled a change in direction. Now the animated series was going to be much more of a multiverse story in the vein of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or No Way Home, which would celebrate Dirt Gently as a whole by including characters from the novels, the BBCA show, as well as introducing some new characters. The pandemic understandably caused major delays in writing the show and putting everything in place. I feel the biggest issue that the team had to deal with, apart from the availability of staff and of course the cast, was securing the rights to use the BBCA characters. Now with a huge period of radio silence, many fans, myself included, believed the animated Dirt Gently project had been quietly shelved and forgotten about. Arvin's comment at the end of 2022 confirmed that there had been some sort of legal wrangling behind the scenes that has now since been resolved. The socially distanced Dirk short film from 2021 has, somewhat hilariously to me as an editor, a very basic Final Cut Pro default credit sequence at the end in which Max Landis is credited for creating the character of Amanda Bronsman. Now this was a video that had no actual involvement from Landis, and it was made gratis, free of charge, with all the proceeds going to charity. But nonetheless, I don't think this would have been done unless Arvind was worried about legal action from Landis. 
We also know that at least one of Landis' other characters, Bart, was planned to be featured in the animated series at this point, and if the short film was anything to go by, they might have had to credit Landis there as well. Now you might be wondering, why would it be such a big problem for the animated series to credit Max Landis for creating almost all of the BBC A show's characters? After all, he's not actually working on the show, right? Well, the problem comes when trying to sell the show as a package to buyers. At some point, the execs would surely notice Landis' name in the credits, which given how toxic his name is in the industry, could very well destroy any chance the animated series has of ever getting a distribution deal. The obvious alternative is to drop the BBC A characters from the animated series altogether and eliminate the legal requirement to credit Landis. But firstly, I think that Arvind is far too attached to these characters to not include them in at least some way. And I definitely think, with all due respect to fans of the BBC A show, that for many of them, Dirk alone wouldn't be enough to bring them all back into the fold. It also doesn't make sense why we heard nothing about the project for so long if the solution was as straightforward as uh, just not putting them in the show. <laughs> so here's what I believe happened. At some point after the release of Socially Distanced Dirk, Arvind, the other producers, and Stupid Buddy's lawyers approached Landis's lawyers to do a deal to try and acquire the rights to some or potentially all of the BBC A show's characters. This would have been done incredibly reluctantly, with both parties not being on the best of terms, to put it mildly, and it almost certainly would have taken a very long time to get anywhere, with Landis being very resistant to the idea of giving away rights to his characters. Eventually, some sort of pragmatic agreement would have been reached, whereby Landis handed over the rights to Arvind and company, presumably in exchange for a cash settlement. Admittedly, I'm extrapolating a lot from very little information, but this is the best explanation I can come up with. As usual, of course, I am probably wide of the mark, and the real story is far, far more complicated than I've made it out to be here. I'm so glad you've decided to forego legal representation. It makes things so much simpler. On the contrary, I'm representing myself. As I said, simple. It's impossible to say how much the animated show has changed in development over the past two years, but I can share the information that we know from my interview with Arvind at the end of 2020. It'll be new adventures with many of the characters that we've all come to know and love from the uh, live action TV show, uh, but also with new characters and also with characters from the books. I guess the best modern version of this is Spider-Man into, into the Spider-Verse. Yes, yes. It will sort of bring together, I think a lot of that is best, while telling a new story. And, you know, to preempt some of the many questions I know the fans are asking, it's certainly our intention that many of the cast of the show will find um, a space in the new show. Not necessarily playing the same characters, although in some cases, yes. But I think we'll find interesting ways to sort of mix them up. Will it be exactly the same Dirk? Will it be exactly the same universe? I think those are, those are some of those I'd like to leave as mysteries. I think everyone will will recognize him. <laughs> I think everyone will, will, will know who he is. But he may not be exactly the same version because one of the things we had great fun with particularly when we were doing the TV show and the comics at the same time, was sort of play with this idea that they were multiple Dirks existing in multiple universes. And that, in a way, the glitches, as we came to call our superpowered uh, uh, beings in the Gentleverse, that the glitches were the things there to fix and correct the multiverse. Those are the holistic it... characters, your Bart's, your Rowdy Freeze, yes. your Dirks, those are your Exactly, exactly. That they were there to, to sort of correct the universe when it was going off course. And we started to lean into that quite heavily in the final episodes of season two, where you saw Friedkin, you know, being thrown into the void of the space between the, the universes and you saw him sort of becoming powerful and we opened this idea that there was an interface between our world and the uh, fantasy land of Inglenook and that there were beings that could you know travel between the two and at the same time in the comic books we were having the Dirk Gently of the comic books and the Dirk Gently of the TV show meet each other and some of the characters from the novels like, like Reg and Thor uh, you know, get referenced in the TV series. So we had already started setting up. We, you know, we had a plan. Um, had we had kept going with the TV show, we had a plan to start 
complicating things. And I think some of that complication we're going to take forward into the uh, animated show. This point seems as good as any to explain who Pearl is. So in early 2020, when Arvin took pictures of the show's title from the top of the Story Bible document, either intentionally or unintentionally, you could just about make out what was written on the page underneath with a bit of photo manipulation. My friend Sage did just that, and while it wasn't fully legible, we could read enough to discover that Dirk was going to be hanging out with a new character called Pearl, who seemed to be his assistant. This is what I've pieced together like throughout the lines. So part of it says Hamilton, and then there's a line break, and then it says, though the true motives, dot, 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 society remains hidden, the truth of its existence is, dot, 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 to lead to a much greater mystery for Dirk to, dot, dot, dot. And then this part's interesting, because I think it says rewards Dirk and Pearl. I've stared at it for a really long time. Pearl is the only thing that it could conceivably say. So the last sentence is, rewards Dirk and Pearl with a free trial week at his new, dot, dot, dot. Ooh. So... Yeah, there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack there. So I don't think it's a huge leap to assume that the girl beleaguedly putting up with Dirk in the concept art is meant to be Pearl, and Arvind all but confirmed her identity when I interviewed him. Are Dirk and Pearl the main characters of this new series? They both think so. <laughs> Since Pearl is the only new character that we know about so far, it would seem at first glance that she would be the one Arvind's phenomenal voice talent will be playing. However, I suspect there might also be a bit of the cast mixing up that Arvin talked about at play here. A lot of people mistook Pearl for Farrah Black, Dirk's bodyguard assistant from the BBCA show, played by Jada Shep. From what we've seen, Pearl appears to be a young adult, likely a college or university student, and of all the previous Dirk cast members I think Jade would be perfect to voice Pearl. And it helps that even though Farrah didn't get paired up with Dirk all that much in the show, Jade had great chemistry with Sam Barnett. So it's possible that Pearl was designed with some similarities to Jade because she was the creative team's first choice to voice her. I think Sam coming back to voice Dirk in this series is a near certainty. I would bet any amount of money on it. The bigger question though is which version he'll be playing since it's very likely that a few other Dirks will pop up and interact with him. Not least the BBCA version of Dirk. Believe it or not, this has actually happened once before in the comics written by Arvind where it was revealed that BBCA Dirk and Comic Dirk both actually have Sam Barnett's voice. I suspect though that Sam will voice the main version of Dirk, who seems very similar to the BBCA version, with my guess being that the main difference will be the animated version of Dirk won't have the whole Blackwing backstory. It seems unlikely to me that the animated show would establish its own version of Blackwing, especially if we have BBCA Blackwing subjects like Bart showing up from their own parallel timeline. We were also able to get a few interesting details about this version of Dirk as well. At the start of the story, Dirk will own at least two pets, possibly more, who are definitely not cats. I can't be any more specific than that because Arvin didn't tell me more. We also know from one of the concept art pieces that depicts Dirk running away from an explosion that there will definitely be multiple explosions in the show, most of which involve Dirk, and one of which is the inciting incident, which probably involves the other versions of Dirk in the story and causes the whole multiverse event to happen in the first place. That's about all we really know for sure, which is probably a good thing. After all, we wouldn't want to know the whole story before it's even shown to the network and executives making a decision on whether or not to greenlight it. However, for curiosity's sake, here, in no particular order, are five of the most likely pre-existing Dirk Gently characters who I think might show up in the animated series. Apart from Bart, of course. She was in the concept art, so we kind of know already that she's extremely likely to pop up. So, the first character that I think is going to appear in Dirt Gently the Animated Series is Professor Reg Cronotis. For those who haven't read the books, Reg is a good-natured, kind, elderly and forgetful tutor at St. Ed's University in Cambridge, who has spent the majority of his life living in a flat on the campus. In the original novel it's revealed that Reg's flat is in fact a time machine, and Reg is essentially, to all intents and purposes, a Time Lord who has lived so long that he cannot remember his own origins. This is because Reg is a character taken wholesale from Douglas's script for the Doctor Who episode Sharda, which was infamously unfinished due to industrial strike action at the BBC. Reg controlled his time machine via an abacus, and at the end of the novel the machine no longer functions due to the phone in Reg's flat being fixed by British Telecom. Reg shows up again in Arvin's Salmon of Doubt comic, where he has rewired and fixed the time machine by putting the controls into the bathroom plumbing. To cut a long and complicated story short, 
One of the side effects of this is that the time machine can now traverse between alternate timelines rather than just time and space. The time machine is still functioning at the end of the story, so Reg could in theory use it to access the animated series' timeline. Due to his appearance in Sharda, Reg has been portrayed on screen and radio by a few different actors, all of whom have since either passed away or retired from acting, meaning that the part would have to be recast. The next character who I think might appear is Hugo Friedkin. So Friedkin is a BBC A character, he's the trigger happy Blackwing Grunt turned supervisor who ends up having a pretty abrupt change of heart near the end of the show and decides to help Dirk return Project Moloch to the fantasy land of Wendemore. In the process Friedkin gets stabbed through the back and chest by a giant pair of scissors and then his replacement at Blackwing, Ken, decides somewhat unnecessarily to kick the fatally injured Friedkin into a portal just before it closes. Instead of dying, Friedkin wakes up in this strange space between worlds and seems to unlock some sort of power and intellect that he didn't have access to before. As Arvin hinted at, Freakin is one of these beings who seemingly has access to other worlds and timelines, so like Reg, he very much has the means to become part of the animated series. There's also a lot of different directions Freakin could be taken in as a character, and Duskin Milligan, who played Freakin, has said during interviews that he really wishes he'd gotten the chance to explore that. While I'm not a huge fan of Freakin's arc in the second season of the BBCA show, I do believe that of all the BBCA characters, Freakin and Bart are the two that end on the biggest cliffhangers. I could see Freakin maybe being a shadowy spectral figure who is subtly teased early on and then comes to prominence later in the story. The third character I think might appear is Janice Pierce. So Janice is Dirk's put upon and fed up secretary from the books who spends her time stubbornly refusing to do any work due to Dirk refusing to pay her any wages. Appropriately enough, she is a somewhat underappreciated and underutilized character who never really got to have her day in the sun on TV. Lisa Jackson did a good enough job at portraying Janice in the BBC4 TV show and certainly has her moments, but she didn't get a whole lot to do overall in the show's short run. In the BBC Radio 4 audio drama, however, Janice was portrayed by Olivia Coleman, who, as you'd expect, put in a very feisty performance and felt much more like a stroppy main sidekick to Dirk, with the pair often bickering like a married couple, which was great fun to listen to. She has since gone on to win an Oscar, as well as lending her voice to animated films such as The Mitchells vs. The Machines, where she played the villain. I do think Coleman is maybe too big of a name now to come back to Dirk gently, and I don't think that she is the talent Arvind has gotten on board, since I wouldn't describe Janice as a new character, but I feel like she's very much the blueprint for what I'm expecting from the character of Pearl and her dynamic with Dirk. I have no idea how Janice would actually get into the animated series, but she's been turned into a vending machine and survived, so I'm sure she can find a way. The fourth character, or rather set of characters, that I think will appear are the Rowdy Three. This is a bit of a cheat, of course, because this is essentially a group of characters, several characters from the BBCA show, the foursome of Martin, Grips, Cross, and Vogel, their leader Amanda, and of course, the Beast. There are basically three reasons for this lot to appear. Number one, the Rowdies' destruction, mayhem, and energy vampirism would all look really great animated in the show's art style if the concept art's anything to go by. Number two, Social Distance Dirk set up that Amanda was worried about Dirk, so it makes sense for her to be looking for him. And number three, the Beast was a somewhat comedic and underdeveloped character who joined the Rowdies right at the end of the show, and it'd be interesting to see what their dynamic is now with the Rowdy Three's six members. As a group, they are some of the show's breakout fan favorite characters right up there with Bart, so it's hard to see the Rowdies really being neglected here. If anyone's coming back from the BBCA show, it's likely gonna be them. The final character who I think is gonna appear is Dirk Gently. Now this one might seem like something of a given, but actually there's one specific version of Dirk Gently who's been played on TV before who would be absolutely perfect to appear in the animated show, and that is Stephen Mangan's version of Dirk from the 2010 and 2012 BBC4 miniseries. First off, he's a real contrast to Sam Barnett's version of the character, much more of a lovable rogue, constantly trying to get more money and manipulate people for his own ends. Sam Barnett Dirk's catchphrases are wholesome things like take control of your life or did it. Whereas Mangan's Dirk is embrace the chaos or come on you beautiful bitch whenever trying in vain to start his dilapidated 70s car. I have a feeling they both play off of each other really well. 
Arvin did want Mangan to have a cameo in the BBCA show that didn't end up happening for scheduling reasons, but now here's the chance for an in-character appearance that would work beautifully with the premise of the series. Stephen still really cares about the books because he did two official audiobooks for them at the end of 2021. Admittedly, this is more of a fanboy's decades-long dream, and I do think it would also be amazing if Harry Enfield, Michael Bywater, or even a new actor came along to voice their own unique version of Dirk. For instance, why not even have the female version of Dirk that we saw briefly in the comics? This is perhaps the final and most important question. After all the delays, the rights issues, the controversial former showrunner, the pandemic, securing the talent, switching to a different animation studio, getting all the producers and stakeholders on board, the tightly knit secrecy, the piecemeal clues, and the comments on random Reddit threads that I made, will the team finally seal the deal and sell this thing? Well, despite not feeling as confident now as I did back in 2019, I still feel overall optimistic that they can. But as for the time frame, I honestly don't see the show coming out until late 2024 or 2025 at the earliest. Stupid Buddy certainly has some great relationships with the likes of Hulu, Disney Plus and Netflix, and we've just got to hope that the pitch is successful and a deal is reached that we'll finally get a, some sort of lift-off statement for the animated show to tell us, yes, it's definitely happening at some point, although we don't know when. Like the Electric Monk, we've been wandering for a valley on top of a bored looking horse. Our faith and our patience has certainly been tested, and I know it's going to be stretched even further over the next few years. But rest assured that the faith that moves mountains and believes them to be pink against all available evidence is a strong and abiding one. Dirk. Listen to me. Why, do you have new lies to tell me? We need you to come back in for the animated series. Yes, why not? It's only been 16 years. 